Okay, so today would be the last Car Talk Thursday of the month of April. And one thing I've been meaning to do for the first three months and just never did was for the last Car Talk of the month, just kind of talk about my month as a whole. It's like, what are some of like... I guess in a way, it's like, what is the theme of the month? And maybe the theme of the month will be the same for several months. I don't know. But for example, to me, the big theme of April was just productive because I felt like so many things I got done. For example, I finally have been reading fucking Fate. I have been wanting to read this visual novel since I think 2013. Maybe a little before, maybe a little later, but somewhere around that. And it's been a fucking decade in the making, and I finally got around to it. Now, I technically started it in March, but April is when I finished the Fate Route. I uh, started and read all of Unlimited Blade Works, and I've started Heaven's Feel. I'm at about the end of day 8 out of 16, which in terms of days is about halfway through. In terms of content, I don't know if that's halfway through or not. I don't think it is. But regardless, like, I'm, I, let me try that again. But regardless, I am reading Heaven's Feel. I'm getting into it. I don't know if I'm quite enjoying it as much as UBW, but that's less of like, oh yeah, Heaven's Feel is just not as good and more just unlimited Blade Works was just everything I wanted from Fate. But Heaven's Feel is really starting to become something interesting. Like, we'll see how it is by the end. But that's such a big get for me. And then on top of that, Clay has started reading Umineko. And I've been really interested in Umineko for a long time. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was... Not even a couple anymore. I think it was like... When was 2015? That was eight years ago? Yeah, fuck at this point. It was eight years ago. So that was when I started law school. It was the like summer before law school. I remember reading Umineko. I read the first two novels. I was about partway through the third novel when I stopped. And it's important to say I did not stop because I was like, eh, this is boring. I'm not getting into it. It was genuinely like, I'm starting law school, the internet's a little jank in my dorm. I guess I mean dorm, is more of an apartment. But it's like, it's kind of jank, and I really want to make sure like I'm getting the material down so I don't feel like I have as much time to play games or watch anime and all that stuff, which every other semester of law school, aside from my first one, was like, no, I, I watched a lot of shit, I played a lot of shit, I wrote a lot. It was just like, Umaneko was at the exact wrong time, and I've wanted to get back into it for a long time. And seeing Clay read it, I'm remembering a lot of details, I'm remembering why I really liked it, I've been reading quite a bit of it with him. So once he gets to the third novel, because yeah, right now he's on the second one, I think I'm going to officially pick it up. I'm going to make sure I finish Fate first, because that is the big project, but after that, we're going to get into Umaneko, at the very least the question arcs. Once I finish the question, I, I plan on finishing the whole thing, but the question arcs will either be, this is a good stopping point for now, we'll just put a pin in it, and then we'll work on other shit, or we'll go, fuck, this is too good, I gotta keep reading. It is fascinating, though, because I learned a spoiler several years ago, like when I was really getting into Umaneko, I learned something really, really big and important. And I won't say what it is, in case anyone here is reading Umaneko. If Clay is watching this, I don't know. I don't want to be of a big spoiler for him. But I... I learned something. And it makes rereading some of this shit really fucking interesting. Because I don't know everything that's quite going on in the background. There are still genuine gaps in my knowledge that I don't want to look up and fill. But it is like, oh... Oh, this scene is really fucking weird and fascinating knowing what's really going on here. And on the one hand, there's that part of me that's mad that I will never be able to read through Umineko unspoiled. But there's that other part of me that goes, I heavily doubt I would have read Umineko a second time given how fucking long it is. And so going through kind of, not 100%, but kind of knowing where it's going is a really unique experience, and I do kind of dig it. Um, on top of that, so like, so visual novel shit, productive. 
video games. So I haven't played a lot of games this month, mostly because I've just been reading Fade. Like, this is the big project. I don't really want to have a whole lot on the side. I had, like, a couple hours in Zillia, and then I haven't touched it since, which is not a, like, I dropped it, this game is ass. It was more just, I had a day where I was like, I really want to play something. This is on my list. I'll, I'll boot it up. This was pretty cool. And I just haven't had the itch since. Clay and I are playing through Tales of the Abyss. That is our new project after DreamWorks, which we'll put a pin in that. But we're going through it. We're about 10, maybe 11 hours in. We're around Xeriuth. I don't know if we've quite gotten to the city yet. If not, we're like just outside it. Last night, we did the like desert. It's the desert oasis. And then there's a dungeon right after. It's like the cow ruins or something. I don't exactly remember where you fight Sink and what's his name, like Logar or something, the the big dude with the scythe. <laughs> Sorry, I really like sometimes pronouncing the C inside that it's a scythe. It just makes it sound like far more vicious. It sounds stupid as hell, don't get me wrong, but it just sounds so vicious, like I don't like it. But regardless, uh, we fought those two dudes, so that's about where we are. It's a mixed bag. <laughs> it really is. My biggest problem with the game is its performance is terrible. It takes, like, so I'm also, I, I don't know, never mind, I'll, I'll talk about that part in a second. Whenever you get into a fight, it feels like it takes a little bit for the game to load the fight. To the point where it's noticeable. Like in Symphonia, you hit something, the screen shatters, and it's a cool transition. It felt like it happened relatively quick. Here it doesn't. When you go into a new area, it really feels like the game takes a while to load. It's really noticeable when you save. Like, in Symphonia, when I saved, it took, I don't know, five seconds? Maybe seven? <laughs> like, it it really did not feel like it was taking time. Abyss takes half a minute. You are just sitting there, and it's, it's just... It's, it's just annoying... I feel like that's, it's not even just like, yeah, I mean, it's dead air. Like, yeah, I mean, anytime you're saving, it is kind of dead air, but you expect it to go quick. It feels like it takes so long, and I don't get why. I don't think the game looks that... Like, we're playing the original PS2 version. I don't think it looks that good. I think I think the soundtrack is fine. I really like the opening. I prefer the vocal version more because we have the instrumental version, but I still like it. The gameplay is fine, uh, I don't want to say it, because I'm not having as much fun as I did in Symphonia. The FOF system is, eh, like, I don't really give a shit. Like, it's cool, I guess, but it's not something that really gets utilized a lot in combat. It's, I mean, in bosses it kind of does, but in regular fights, like, they're they're over before you really get a chance to. Money is scarce as hell. So I feel like, yeah, we're just kind of running on fumes when it comes to items and equipment at all times. And it's not like this is a survival horror game where it's like, oh, that's like the point. You're not supposed to have a lot of shit. I'm like, no, I I felt like I had money in Symphonia. Now, it's like, I did I always have enough to get everything I wanted? No, but I was still able to afford... So, like, a few pieces of armor, a couple new weapons, and to restock up on gels and life bottles. We just don't do that in Abyss. So, like, yeah, we're regularly selling shit, we're fighting, like, everything we come across, and we just don't make money. And the story's fine. It hasn't gotten to the part where it gets great. Excuse me. But I feel like it's starting to pick up. I feel like the characters are starting to grow on me, which it's been 10 fucking hours. I should hope they are. I don't love them. I don't hate them either. It's more like, I don't really hate them anymore. <laughs> it's, it's an experience. Like, I feel like I'm very neutral towards the game. I'm, it's becoming more positive, but it's still like, I'm playing Abyss mostly because I know I'm supposed to. Like, I want to eventually play all the Tales games. It's one of my big goals for next year. But there were four Tales games I had on my list for this year. Symphonia, because I wanted to replay it, which I have. Zillia, which I, I will get to at some point. Abyss, which I'm doing with Clay. And then Tales of Eternia, which that was the pin I threw, and we'll talk about it in a second. I'm I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, okay, I genuinely want to play the game, 
But it's kind of, it feels like I'm playing it out of obligation to fill that gap in my knowledge. And because everyone says the game gets incredible, I'm looking forward to that. But I also had just kept hearing about how great Tales of Arise was, and I thought it was just super disappointing. I still liked it, but I'm very, very mixed on Arise, and I really hope Abyss isn't the same. Because if by the end of Abyss, if I'm just sitting there going like, man, this game was mid as hell... I'm going to be really disappointed by it. And not just in the sense of like, yeah, I mean, it's, I was expecting something really good, but I'm disappointed. It's like, no, like I, I felt like the first act of the game was a fucking slog. You mean it doesn't get amazing later? Like I wasn't rewarded for this. Yikes. But let's take that pen out and talk about Tales of Eternia. I'm like five, six hours in. I love it. Like, I feel like the characters, I like the way, I love the way they interact with each other. It's not quite lunar tears of just people roasting each other and being aggressively passive aggressive, but it's kind of like that. I like it. I like how it's taken no time at all for the plot to start, which Abyss is kind of like that, but it throws so many terms at you that it doesn't really explain. There's context clues, so you have an idea of what's going on and what they're talking about. But you won't get full explanations about how, like, the world works and the magic system works until several hours in. It feels like in Eternia, any time a new term is thrown out, it's immediately explained and there's no bullshit. I feel like combat is really fun. I consistently get money and, like, gels and life bottles from fighting enemies. Like, yeah, I don't have a problem with resource management. It's an RPG. Like, I don't... That's not what I go to RPGs for. Like, this is great. Um, it doesn't load or save like ass. <laughs> like, every time I play it, I'm like, man, I really don't want to go back to Abyss. i like, I can't let Clay see me play this game because he's not want to go back to Abyss. And yeah, every time he sees me play it, he's like, you look so fucking happy. I hate you. <laughs> like, I wish that was me <laughs> playing Abyss, but it's not. Um... Which, speaking of, uh, speaking of Eternia, though, I've been able to do, like, some big game hunting. And not, you know, like, shooting lions and shit, but, like, actually, like, big video games, like, ex pretty expensive ones that are on my list. I was able to buy a copy of Radiant Dawn, because next year, like I said, I want to play the Tales of games. I also want to go through the Fire Emblem games. So, again, I do need to pick Path of Radiance back up. But I, I got Radiant Dawn... Clay and I went halvesies on Destiny and Eternia, which I keep wanting to call Eternia Destiny 2 because that's what the English version is called because actual Destiny 2 did not come out in the States. It's like, I'm calling it Eternia because that's what it's more known as and to avoid confusion. But every time I think of it, I'm like, yeah, Tales of Destiny 2, not to be confused with actual Tales of Destiny 2. But we went halvesies on the two of them he actually bought Destiny, and then I paid him his half. I actually bought Eternia, and then he paid me his half. Uh, and then when my tax returns came in, I bought Xenosaga 2 and 3 from a friend of mine who was, like, he's selling his game collection. They're like, ooh, I was, like, I plan on playing all the Xeno games. Well, not all of them, because I tried playing through X. I fucking hated it. I, I don't like Xenoblade Combat. I will be full on about that. I think Xenoblade 1... Like, presentation one. Okay, I mean, I think the, like, graphics are, like, they, they look fine. Um, I, I think they look better on the Switch. I don't really like how it looks on the Wii. I think, like, the music is fucking stellar. I think the environment and the world is fucking stellar. The story is so good. Oh, oh shit. Um, my, my dad's here. I don't know if you saw that car going by. He and I are going to get lunch. He's here a lot earlier than I thought. So I'm, I'm just going to finish this thought real quick, and then I'll have to continue this later. I didn't really want to have to fucking split a car dog video, but regardless, um, story is great. I fucking hate the gameplay. Two plays differently, and I like the way two plays, but X plays a lot like one, and I think it's ass. But I do want to play Xeno Gears. It's on my list for this year. I want to play the Xeno Saga trilogy, so I'm glad I now have access to them. And Clay has Gears, so I have access to that one, too. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll end it, I'll end this part here, but like, yeah, uh, big game hunting, that's a W, uh, blech. okay, we're back, 
let's continue with the video, which, speaking of which, one of the things that I was able to do this month was get quite a bit of videos out. You know, in addition to my regular car talks, I watched the Mario movie, and I made a video about it. The Owl House finale, the Dungeons and Dragons movie, the, um, the Fallout Boy video, which is kind of a giant mess, and I won't lie, but I had so much fun, like, I had a lot of fun recording it, I had a lot of fun just talking about one of my favorite bands and preparing for it, which, yeah, I was very unprepared, like I said, it was super fucking messy, I'm like, I don't really know what I'm talking about, I'm just here to talk, but going through the albums multiple times, like, it was such a fun experience, I'm glad I did it, uh... And then, yeah, other videos. I know I put a pen in here earlier somewhere. We finished DreamWorks. You know, like, the reason we are playing Abyss as the project is because we finished the big one that we were doing. And doing the, like, six-hour-long tier list video, which, thanks to anyone who actually watched it, you guys are fucking legends. Um, if you haven't, I made sure to include timestamps on both of the videos. The first movie, or excuse me, the first video goes from... Uh, what's the first movie? It goes from Ants up to... I don't remember what the last one is. I think it's the movie right before Shrek Forever After. And the second part goes from, I believe, Shrek Forever After to The Last Wish. But I have timestamps for every individual movie. So if you just want to hear us talk about very specific ones, they are labeled there. Clay and I are starting to do it with Disney now. Like We've seen every movie but Strange World. So we're doing... Oh, excuse me. Um, Brain stop for a second while I was breathing in. We're doing, I think, four different videos. The first, we've recorded the first two. The first was from Snow White to Jungle Book. The second was from, what's the movie right after Jungle Book? Aristocats through Tarzan. I think our next video is going to be from Fantasia 2000 to Bolt, maybe Princess and the Frog. The last video will be from that movie, like, the next movie after, to Strange World. Because, yeah, with DreamWorks, it was really fucking long. We should have probably made it into three videos at least. So, with Disney, we're going to do four. We've done So, we've done 37 of the 61 films. I don't know when I'll upload them. I don't know if I'll upload them, like, here's the first one, here's the second one. I mean, that, that's how I'm going to do it. They're going to be in parts. <laughs> Excuse me, what I mean is, because we we've only recorded the first two. I don't know when we'll do three and four, probably next week, maybe the week after. So it might be, here's one and two, and it'll be a while, or I'll wait till we'll do all of them, and then, all right, here's one, two, three, and four, all within like a day or two. Oh, uh, is there anything else? Let's see. Ga, 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 ga. Okay, so the only other thing I had to talk about was writing. I've gotten so much done this month. It's been nice. Because I did, like, no writing in March. It was... What was March? I think March was finishing Symphonia. Playing... No, I think I finished Symphonia in February? Because I think most of February was Symphonia. Which means March was Fire Emblem Engage. And it was starting Fate. And really getting down and... I don't want to say down and dirty. like ugh, But, like, really... I almost said grinding out like that also doesn't sound too good. Really focusing on finishing DreamWorks. And now that, yeah. And so there really wasn't a lot of room for writing. And then after kind of taking that month off, like getting to like near the end of the month, I was like, I really want to get back into it. I really want to get back into it. Like I've got some ideas. I've got some, I got some creativity that just needs to get out, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've written, like, four chapters. Now, oh, to be fair, some of them were stuff I had already written. I just had to do some editing, which they still need editing, don't get me wrong. But was essentially able to finish and tweak stuff I had already written. Some of it was just a lot of new crap. It's been a lot of fun. It's like, this is, like I say, it's the thing that makes me happiest in the world. It's coming up with an idea, exploring the idea, tweaking the idea, and then actually putting pen to paper or fingers to keyboard and seeing it take form and then be like, okay, here's all the ideas. And then seeing how many of them are able to essentially be cut and paste from my mind onto the screen or the page. And then how many things just change as I'm writing, as I'm actually getting into the vibe and the feel I'm like, oh, wait a second. 
that idea actually doesn't work that well. This works better. It's like the story is telling me to do this. And then when I do this, and then like the gears start turning, like, well, if I do this, then this happens, and this happens. Oh, oh, this is fucking impeccable. <laughs> or sometimes that'll happen, like, wait, no, the thing I'm writing now is fucking stupid. So <laughs> here's a big X, or like, delete all that shit. Let's go back to the original idea. But I love that feeling. Um,. I remember my mom was telling me the other day about, like, these new, like, AIs. I don't know if it's ChatGPT, if that's just one of them, or if it's a different one. It's like, yeah, you know, you can kind of put your idea in here, and then the AI can write it. You know, that's something that could help, you know, if you get stuck in a spot. I'm like, no, 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 I would never want to do that. Because for me, writing, it really is about the journey and not the destination because of how much the destination changes as I'm writing. There are so many times where I'm like, man, if I could snap my fingers and have my idea just immediately appear on screen and be done for like when I start an idea, it would be an inferior product because you learn a lot about your world, about your characters, about your story, et cetera, et cetera, as you're writing it. And if I could just create it as is in my head, I mean, A, I just wouldn't feel as much joy in the actual... I wouldn't feel the joy of creation. I was like, what's that Five Nights at Freddy's fan game? That's like a really good term for this. That's it. Joy of creation. But it's like, yeah, it just, I wouldn't enjoy it as much. And I don't think the product would be as good. And it wouldn't have the passion in it. Like it, it'd be a lot more soulless. And I mean, I don't know. I don't want to be like that because maybe AI writing is actually phenomenal. I wouldn't know. And like, maybe it does have just like a lot of soul in it, but it wouldn't have mine for better or for worse, but it wouldn't have mine. And if I'm going to put my name on something, I want it to be like, this is my work. I'm happy with it. Or at the very least, I had it. Like, even if it has its problems, or there's things that maybe I could have fixed or should have fixed. I'm still glad I made it, you know? But, um, I think that's really all I have to say. That's, man, that's kind of my overview of March. It's a lot of the shit I was able to get done. It was a super productive month. I don't know about next week. Or next week. Well, I guess next week is the start of May. Holy shit. But I don't really know about next month because I know I'm going to have like four or five days in a row where I'm I'm on a vacation with my family. So I might not get as much done because that's a good chunk of time that I'm just not going to be doing anything. But it's going to be nice. Maybe after April, which is like, all right, we're getting a lot of shit done. Watched a lot of movies. Yo, it took a big project with Fate, got it done. DreamWorks, a big project, got it done. Maybe March is, or excuse me, May is going to be a lot more. It's low-key as hell. I'm just not as worried about getting stuff. I'm not as anal about getting things done. It's just, is what it is. We'll see. But overall, uh, that's it. I hope your April was great. I hope it was as good as mine. I mean, hopefully even better. See you next week. Or not even next week. Um, I'm going to do another video soon, probably today, on Bo is Afraid. I saw it about a week ago. It's a fucking weird movie, man. It's the kind of movie where I couldn't just make a video the day or two after watching it. And, like, I kind of had to sit on it. And even sitting on it, I still don't really know what I think of it. I also haven't done my Unlimited Blade Works video, which I'll probably do tomorrow. And I don't even know if this video was coming out today on the 27th, because like I said, it got split because uh, my dad should have... I'm not trying to be like, yo, dad, you piece of shit. Like, no, not at all. It's just, yeah, sometimes things happen. So it might end up coming out today, might end up coming out tomorrow. We'll see, but um, see you in the next video, which hopefully will be within the next couple days or so.